and thank you for being at our once today, November 15th, 2022, um, Parks and Recreation Meeting. If you will stand for the invocation pledge led by Mr. Debney. Dear God, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be in this place. Lord, thank you for the work that we get to do before you. God, let us just glorify your name. God, we just ask that all the comments and work that we get to do here ultimately serve the citizens that you allowed us to serve. But we just ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Well, I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. And we've got a couple members absent this evening. Um, Mr. Welsh is not here, Mr. Tupper and uh, Mr. Donahue are all absent, but we do have a quorum, so we will continue. Um, we have minutes from our September 27th meeting that have been provided to us. And if I could get a motion to approve or amend. I'll make that yes. motion. Right, we got a motion. Second. That's to approve. All right, I got a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All right, all in favor? Aye. All right, any opposed? All right, ayes have it, we are unanimous. Thank you for doing that, Ms. Rita May. Um, speaking of which, we do want to either give congratulations or condolences to Ms. Rita May. She is moving on to county council, which means one of y'all is gonna have to start taking minutes because otherwise we're gonna be lost. Are you doing it now? I got yes, all right, good. Because the rest of us have been avoiding that for 10 years. So I appreciate all that. Done. All right. There you go. So Rita may want to congratulate you and thank you for your service. Um, and you will finish out the year on this commission and then somebody will replace you on this commission later. So good job. The fiscal year ends November 1st, by the way. Oh, okay. So you've got a whole year. No, you've got another year. No, you're still here. Um, all right, at this time we'll go to public comments, and apparently we have a couple, uh, five folks. All right, great. So, um, you want to call out whoever okay. is, um, well, I'll call them by the just way they go stand in order. Up. That's so fine, Christopher and McClure. All right, I'm opening first. All right, I did practice for five minutes, so I'm gonna try to respect the time limit. Can you guys hear me? Oh, okay. Okay, is that too close, sir? Yeah, and if you will, Chris, just if, uh, give name and address for the record so we can include that in mm -hmm. the next place. Uh, Christopher McClure, 505 Dolphin Drive. Let's see. Um, yeah, so I'm currently representing Somerville Bike Walk. Um, we have a few uh, public comments regarding uh, prioritization of different projects. Uh, in June 2021, we had members work on the Sawmill Branch Trail Master Plan. And uh, we would like to know um, in the discussions for the meeting, what elements of the master plan are gonna be prioritized and implemented, uh, whether it be the, con the extension project, the various parking lots, uh, numerous safety improvements, um, expanding the trail from 10 foot to 12, um, and the other amenities that were contained within the plan. Um, if not, we would like to know if Bike Walk could be brought to the table to possibly help with that, um, or if there will be another community input uh, uh, meeting to address that. Um, I also wanted to speak on the Dorchester Road extension and the Ashley River Park, but I'll do the Ashley River since that'll be easier. Um, we identified that while the Ashley River Park has good access in terms of multi-use pathways, we're concerned that the intersection that has a slip lane might make that difficult for people to safely want to use that multi-use pathway. Um, one thing that we suggested was that possibly having a, uh, a pedestrian crossing light possibly at the uh, slip lane or even covering the slip lane up and converting that lane into a right turn. Um, this is the intersection before you get to the Ashley River Park, uh, going towards Ashley Ridge High School. Oh, yeah, Bacon's Bridge in Dorchester, yes. Um, 
So that was something that we uh, wanted to have under consideration. Um, and going to the Dorchester Road extension, we would also like to know whether the, with the extension, if that were implemented, whether the paved parking lot by the YMCA would also be implemented as well. Um, we feel that having that smooth surface for all kinds of bikes, skinny tires, fat tires, whichever, um, would make it easier for people to participate in Oak Brook's, uh, what was it, Ridgeway Plaza and Midland Parkway, the medical centers that they have there. Uh, you know, contributing to the local economy and not contributing to traffic congestion. Um, I'm sure we have all of that. Um, and also considerations for uh, having connections to Wampy Curve and Brandy Mill Boulevard. Um, they are currently dirt paths, um, not paved. Uh, we also found that if you live on the other side of Old Trolley Road, you would have to, from those points, there's not really a good way for you to access the Salmo Branch Trail unless you want to go like miles up Old Trolley Road's bike lanes, which I would, I would say riding that myself is a big ask for um, people to regularly use that. Um, and then that also goes back to participating in Dorchester Road's economy. If I lived on the other side of Old Trolley Road, I would definitely rather cross the street um, at, a, at a light and take the Salmo Branch Trail the rest of the way than say Old Trolley Road. Um, last one, I promise. Um, there was also questions about the, the widening from 10 feet to 12 feet of the trail. Um, this was talked about before me, so I can't personally testify on that. Um, but there was uh, questions regarding whether that was supposed to occur when Berlin G. Myers phase three uh, construction started. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my public comment. I appreciate the time and hopefully it didn't go too long. No, thank you, mm -hmm. I just appreciate the comments. That's a lot. I, no, that's a lot. Like I said, I budgeted five minutes. <laughs> no, and, and some of it's within our scope, some of it's not, but some I can speak to some of that. Yeah, some of it's partly in our scope and that's okay. No, I appreciate you bringing it up because this is good talking points, so thank you. Who's next? State address? Uh, yes, Dwayne, just 95, name and address. 91 Crosscut Drive. Um, I, I actually didn't know what was going to happen here. I, I found out about Parks and Recreation, and I was wondering if that was a way to help get, you know, Eagle Creek solve the flooding. Like, uh, you know, Sawmill Branch has a, a bike path that we could use, and Dorchester County could use to, to clean out Eagle Creek. Because right now it's wooded and it's, it's you know, it's forest. Um, so is that a possibility that a bike, a bike path could be connected from, say, Wallace Ackerman to Dorchester Road? That's actually part of our plan, yes. I mean, so we, uh, we are trying to work on doing that because it's basically a maintenance shelf for the creek. And so we are looking at improving that and, and paving that as a similar to Sawmill Branch. So that is on our radar, yes. Behind Summerwood and Tranquil Estates? Yes. Wow. Yeah, behind there, and then going up through the bridges all the way past Briarwood and Road. up to where we're building Pine Trace Park, basically, yes. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah, even up to... Uh, How far out do you think something like that could be? Just depends. You know, this is, we, we've been talking about it for a while, but it's just kind of been conceptually. But we're now going to have some funding with the transportation penny that's passed that we can actually look at making some of this a reality. Year, two, maybe? Oh, uh, Five years? Less than five would be my guess. Part of that, as I'm sure you're aware with Eagle Creek, is just permitting with the core is going to be yeah. some of, most of the delay, to be honest, at this point, is trying to get the core to sign off. Most of my neighbors, I think I told you, they don't know where our flood water, our storm water goes when it rains. And I'm just wondering how many more floods I have to put on paper. You know, I got 13 on two pieces of paper, and I just... This, this past Thursday, we got two inches of rain from Hurricane Nicole. And instead of going to work, I went to this, the spillway, which was what I call the root of the problem. It was built by the Corps in the early 80s. It's been there for 40 years. It's ba basically a concrete beaver dam. Um, the water was flowing over top of it at 7 o'clock Friday morning. Um, it flowed over all day Friday. I went there five times, took pictures and videos. I sent those to David. 
I sent them to Mr. Bill Hearn. I sent them to the local core. It took till Saturday afternoon at three o'clock for it to stop running over and start going through the pipes as it was supposed to design, you know. It's got four pipes, one of them is clogged up right now. I just left there a few hours ago. It's the kids help clean the trash out of it before Dorchester County ever gets to it. I mean it's it's it should have been addressed a long time ago. And it's sure. Um and that's outside the scope of the Parks Commission. I know, know. you probably wear it out. You you saw my notes from last time, you're probably good. Do you need them? Would they help you? <laughs> She'll be on council soon enough so she can read through them. Assistant, will you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. My wife is a stay at home mom, so anytime I can take him away, I'd try. That, that's probably all I need. I okay. appreciate your help. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for being here. Okay, next we have Miss Shirley Brown. Shirley Brown? Shirley Brown. I can't hear, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mayor Ackerman, you don't look like Shirley to me. <laughs> you be Shirley Brown. Uh, good evening. My address is 619 St. Clair Road, Dorchester. Uh, to the chairman of the board and members, um, I'm representing the St. Paul Community Park in Dorchester and the, and the St. Paul community. I'm sure that all of you all know where that is. Yes, ma'am. Um, at one time, our park was under the county jurisdiction, but we're no longer under the county jurisdiction. And what we have to do is we have to plan um, our activities and fundraisers to help us to keep the park going. And we have a few people that does that. And um, we would like to ask the park or the county um, if we could get a walking trail and maybe some more benches um, to help us. And is it possible that we can get back under the county um, so that we could you know, get some more help? Because we really don't have any help except for the few people that's, that's working with us. Thank you. Shirley, St. Paul, that's the church owns the property? Is that right? Yes, sir. Is that, okay, all right. Yes, sir. All right, so thank you for that. I mean, and certainly we can look at, I think we're gonna be looking at doing the grants that we did before, so we can talk a little bit more about that. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, thanks. Me are next. Oh, I'm sorry. Next we have Mr. John Mott. All right, can you hear me okay? You guys? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Name and address. 244 L-U-D-E-N Drive Apartment B. So, all right, we had some questions about the Eagle Chandler Creek, so let's start with that. Starting from Hummingbird Drive all the way to Lanson Road is phase one, if I recall correctly. Uh, in my opinion, we need to try for a below grade crossing. Uh, the big obstacle is this stormwater outfall that serves the road will have to be reworked. Fortunately, Dorchester County owns this piece of property. So, and that's an op also an opportunity to put a parking area. Um, let's see. Farther up, other and the maintenance shelf extends all the way to Miles Jameson Road and the upcom and includes and adjoins the upcoming uh, Pine, Trace. Pine Trace Park. Yes, thank you. We're gonna name that something else, but we'll call it that. <laughs> well, that's what it's currently named. Yeah. The previous uh, park director, Eric Davis, uh, made this spur crossing at the uh, at this light, he made that official. I don't know how official that is anymore. <laughs> um, let's see. They're going down a power line right away between. Yes, Randy there Mayer are existing right away. Okay. All right, so we got a power line right away which we can work with. Okay. I've. Um, I. Okay. Yeah, the par power line goes from here to there. Yep. To there. So. Copy. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, any questions on that? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, crazy idea of mine is a uh, trail going from from uh, Miles Jameson all the way to 
uh, Gehagen Park trail and on-street bikeways, but that's for another time. That requires a lot of jur jurisdiction. You're getting uh, into Berkeley County over there, aren't we? Three different jur jurisdictions, okay. Berkeley, North Charleston, Charleston. Okay. It's, like I said, for another Down time. Down the road, okay. Uh, so now, all right, Black Lair is various conceptual trails, but that's for another time also. Well, let's talk to that real quick, but well, you know what, we'll, never mind. He wants your, to talk, this is your Jay time. wants to talk about the cross, above grade no, crossing. No, go on. This is your time, not mine, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Above grade crossing at Dorchester. Um, eventually it'd be a great thing to, and uh, there is some willingness in the town and county to get a trail that connects to the uh, to the new to the Somerville Park that's going to be here, the bend on the Ashley, and here's the boat, existing Justin boat landing. Um, another option would be going down through the state park and putting a new uh, where there used to be a small bridge here, but the state park seems resistant to that from what I've heard. All right, Sawmill Branch Trail. This purple thing is the YMCA to Dorchester Road segment. There is a bridge that will be required here, re requiring uh, Army Corps of Engineers approval. And also this ditch is scheduled to be reworked a little bit and it's at its intake end where it floods here as a part of the, that's one of the things that's on the, uh, on the, planning for the bond money, if I recall correctly. All right, at the other end, how the trail is going to get screwed up by the Berlin G. Myers Parkway is a different time, subject for a different time. All right, at the north end, not many realize this opportunity and need. Currently it terminates at, at uh, East Richardson and the parking area, which has been also beautified by the town. There is maintenance shelf going farther north. We'll have to work, uh, we would have to work with the CF, excuse me, Norfolk Southern to go under their rail bridge, but there is room, I have ground truth that. And of course, permission from the Army Corps of Engineers, since it is their drainage project. Uh, Another, now, East 3rd North Street behind the, if we can get permission from the uh, holding company for Baltimore Meadows State Armory, we can stay on that side of the canal. But a bridge would, pedestrian bridge would be needed there. Otherwise, another pedestrian bridge would be needed because this bridge doesn't have, is only two lanes wide. Um, getting us to Highway 78, it's important that this, these two segments be built as soon as possible so that a below grade crossing can be prioritized. There is enough vertical clearance to do so. Uh, below grade crossing, that would get us across 78 and continuing with the maintenance right of ways, we can get all the way to uh, Mary Mead Drive near the Costco. Uh, we'd have to work with the town on th at that because the county line ends behind the, uh, the apartment complex, but it does continue along where that new development by a multi-use development that is anchored by Roper, will be anchored by Roper. Um, though that's those are the opportunities that the Sawmill Branch Trail provides. How close am I, how am I doing on time? All right, uh, throughout the county, I've done a few other in black opportunities. There are many opportunities utilizing ex exceed existing rights of way. Particularly exciting for me is the power line right of way that's going to be paralleling the uh, Glen McConnell Parkway, uh, which is good opportunity, which would be better than putting something right, be uh, 
bicycle facility right next to the parkway. And most of these other black lines are also Caroline rights of way. Uh, what else? This purple guy here is roadside path that will be along Berlin G. Myers. Uh, these less intense greens are existing paths. We do need a connection running from the Walmart area down to this orphan path that runs along Dorchester Road. We could use a connection, connection there at this end. And that's pretty much everything except for my crazy idea to make an entire loop. Any questions? No, thank you, John. You too. Yep. I can uh, appreciate the work. I'll, I'll make sure I'd like to get the address to you in the minutes yep. for this, and I'll give you all everybody the address for this. Okay. All right. All right. Is this um, you got this on a flash drive, or is this no? Just this is accessed via the World Wide Web. Okay. You just leave that up for the time being. We may use that as a discussion. Yeah, I think you might need it. <laughs> yeah, we'll just, I mean, I don't know what, what we got to reference. So it may not hurt. Thank you. What else we got? And then we have Mayor Ackerman. Now my turn. Now it's your turn, Mayor. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman and committee members, I'd like to really thank you for what you're doing throughout the county as far as parks and recreational concern. There's been much improvement over the years. But I also read an article in the Eagle Record about the uh, uh, Bay Bailey Davis Park ball fields and not being able to use. I have two ball fields. Actually, I had a third, and for lack of use, I've actually let it grow up so we could do it. So if anyone wants to use our fields up in that area, all I have to do is coordinate with us you know, doing the leagues. Matter of fact, right now I have a, a, a team out of Somerville playing on my big field. Okay. And so uh, if they'd like to use them, if they just simply coordinate us with them, we'd certainly like to share them with them so they could utilize them and okay. that would give us some uh, additional space. And if we need to, we could reopen the other field that we've actually closed off on that part right. of it. So thank you all. Thank you. Let us know that. Sure. Staff will make a note of that. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Is that all for public comments, Ms. Reedermay? Okay. All right. So we will move on to our staff reports and I will turn that over to who's, who's doing the honors. I'll go ahead with the PowerPoint presentation. Up. Okay. So we'll and I believe keep this minimized so we'll talk about it later. Yeah. All right. I'll just either hit this or click to keep so going. Fancy, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so Keith and I are gonna tag team on this. All right. So, uh, Everybody ask hard questions. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, that's no problem. So we'll get started with Davis Bailey. So as you can see here with the PowerPoints, Davis Bailey hosted its second annual Trunk or Treat event on October 28th. Uh, just on a quick one, we had uh, about 500 people roughly show up for that and take part in it. It was very well attended. It was Everything we heard was very positive. It was a great event. Uh, we shut down the splash pad uh, so November 1st. Facilities came and pressure washed it, so it should be good for a bit. Then the Army and Navy lights were fixed by Dorchester County facilities. Uh, and the Dixie Youth Baseball League has been practicing on the fields. Um, so Bert has been working with them, trying to coordinate some stuff and kind of fix things here and there with them to try and get this relationship a little stronger. Uh, vending machines have been in, uh, delivered and installed at the pavilion and near the concession stand. And then um, in all of our parks, we have created, teaming up with the IT department, uh, signs about yay big um, that have a QR code. So if you have any questions or concerns, you go up, you scan the QR code. You say like if, for example, we actually had one for Ashley River, one of the cable lines on the observation deck broke. Someone took a picture, sent it. So that way they can suggest any questions, concerns, anything like that. So that way if they don't have time to call or they don't want to stop into the office, they can submit it that way. So those have been installed at Davis Bailey. He has them on both ends of the park. And then uh, we had two facility rentals uh, over the month generating in $325 of revenue. 
And then Davis Bailey also hosted the Dorchester County Veterans Day celebration fireworks event. Uh, with the rain, we kind of had to separate things at different ends of the park. So if you were there, it was fairly well attended. It just didn't look like it because all the inflatables had to go on the basketball court. We had to pull the stage off towards the parking lot, put the big 40 by 40 tent near that. So it really spread things out. Um, but it was, it was pretty well attended. And I definitely think there is room for improvement for next year to build on. Okay. Questions before I move on? Is there anything? Okay. Next one is Ashley River Park. So we have hosted several events, uh, starting with the State Trippy Bash, which we um, had them come and do their event. So we helped them in uh, any way that we could. It was very well attended. It was a great fundraiser. Um, we did the Dorchester County Appreciation Lunch in on October 27th for all Dorchester County employees. That was very well attended. They had a blast. We set up, we had food trucks, uh, cornhole, the inflatable archery game, and we. Do you have any for me? Oh, real quick, real quick. Okay. We'll go down right. the, um, on the next one. The next, All right. Yeah. So that was pretty well attended. We did our trunk retreat at Ashley River on the 29th. I'll get more into details on that when we get to the special programming side of things. And then this past Saturday, we had an event with Books and Beyond where they used the Palmetto Picnic Shelter. And what Books and Beyond does is they go and do local events where they hand out books for free to kids. And they handed out over 200 books to local children. They did some readings. It was heavily attended, and the Palmetto Picnic Shelter was packed during that whole event. And then, as well with Davis Bailey, the splash pad was closed for November 1st. And we are coordinating a, a different plan with facilities to pressure wash it with a special concrete cleaner so that way we can kind of keep the algae buildup at bay a little bit longer. Uh, we also put the QR code signs up. We put three in this park, so we have one near the observation deck one in between the dog parks, and then we put another one near the playground area. We also had a vending machine installed inside the office building, and then um, staff has been meeting to discuss and review public event applications, so we've been tweaking them. We've been meeting with other people, and as you can see here, uh, we are working with the DD2 district for their Caribbean night to have it at Ashley River Park, so we can try to make this an annual event for them. And we're also partnering with the Somerville Orchestra to do the Beat Beethoven 5K. So it's gonna be a 5K running event, and then they're gonna do a concert. So we are currently in the logistical phases of those with them. Questions? I think you wanna ask. So will we play in Beethoven the entire race? Is, uh, or is that gonna be played throughout the-, the So we, we asked that Are you having question. to run on cadence with we, we asked that question and he said he was gonna mix it up, but uh, he wanted to start and finish with Beethoven. So we'll, uh, right. we're trying to, uh, Laquan and I are currently trying to map out the best possible 5K uh, trail for this, since the trails are limited there and we plan on, if it works, using it for the Friends of Dorchester's uh, adventure. Yeah, Ashley River Race, okay. Cool. You guys are good with that, we'll go to the next slide. Um, so Ashley River Park was featured in the Post and Courier's 101 Things to Do in South Carolina, we came in at number seven. Uh, so I don't think it'll be a hidden gem much longer, uh, but it's good to see that uh, the general patrons of not just Dorchester County, but the Tri-County area are enjoying the park. Um, and then as you can see here, here, we got a pie chart. So we had 44 facility rentals this month, generating just over $6,000 in revenue. We had over 2,200 annual pass check-ins this month with uh, just under 5,600 total annual pass holders. Um, we're gonna probably eclipse, actually I think we did eclipse 5,600 today. We sold uh, three passes. And then we've had 7,891 day pass visitors generating in 20,000 and change in admissions along with annual pass purchases. We've done $150 in vendor fees. And as you can see, we've done $189.94 in concessions and vending. And then with the pie chart, it kind of gives you a breakdown of the percentage of revenue. Okay, so Pine Trace Natural Area. Um, just wanna provide some updates on where staff is with that. I think most of you are aware the construction drawings um, are underway by our engineering consultant, ADC. And that was based on uh, county council giving approval uh, of that, uh, I think it was about a month ago. 
the engineers were on the site last, um, I guess it was last week, uh, to inspect the flag, to inspect the, the property and flag the area for trees in anticipation of discussion with uh, Somerville's Arborist. Um, we're going to be meeting with a disc golf uh, consultant, so we were out marking the uh, tees and pins for that. I believe that meeting is scheduled for sometime this, later this month. Um, so looking out beyond the crystal ball permitting and construction contracts, we're anticipating those um, to be done around April of next spring, and then we would go out and uh, um, start construction shortly thereafter. We've um, been observing, and this is basically staff has been observing some traffic, potential traffic issues around the school, um, in particular parents in the morning and afternoon dropping off on uh, Chandler, Chandler Creek Road, school buses sitting there and idling, and um, it has brought some, I guess, concerns at the staff level with the uh, amount of traffic on there at certain periods of time. What does that mean for using that road to getting in into the park? And should there be some kind of an emergency at the school or a lockdown, what does that mean to get people out of the park? So there is some conversation going on right now. We are engaging um, at the staff level public safety. We'll probably be reaching out very soon with the new uh, DD2 superintendent, um, just to bring, I guess, to his attention the plan that we're working on and um, try to get some uh, feedback and partnership with the school to address some of the traffic uh, patterns that are there now. From what we were able to glean, the buses are on the, basically idling on Chandler Creek Road as a result of COVID protocols that were put into place by DD2 uh, administration a couple of years ago. Whether or not they need to keep on doing that, we can stack everything on the school property would actually help. So hopefully those conversations in the immediate future will uh, bring some resolution to that. Uh, moving on to Pine, I'm sorry, to uh, Swan Drive. Um, Notice of, in, of intent for stormwater discharge for the uh, construction activities. That notice of intent was filed with DHEC. Um, staff is in the process of taking measurements uh, along with the consultant for the proposed decking. That's actually in the kayak launch area to provide river access. And we're anticipating that the uh, project will be bid as early as um, the beginning of next year. Construction would then take place later in the spring. Now on to Rosebrow Park. Um, so we've been doing a lot of routine maintenance. Uh, Laquan and myself have been going a couple times a month and we've been blowing off all the trails, making them a little wider, easier to navigate so people can see where they've been going. We are partnering up with the Friends Committee to try and, and with Dorchester Trust to try and beef up some of these trails, um, cut out routes that need to be cut out, bring in some material to help make them a little easier, more attainable. And then we are also working with local uh, scout groups to do some Eagle and Service Scout projects so we can get the picnic shelters painted, the picnic tables sanded and sealed so they look nicer. And then the bathroom floors, we're gonna get painted to make it easier from a custodial standpoint. And then we're gonna try and beef up everything else around there that we can just to make sure that it is a park that continues to be heavily utilized. Um, and we've been establishing more of a park ranger presence there and we've seen an uptick in people using the trail since we started doing this. Okay. And we also put QR code signs there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a couple comments on the uh, Ashley Lear Park uh, pedestrian connector. Um, staff still continues to explore potential grant funding for this project. Um, we had reached out to, I, I guess it's hit uh, construction um, to provide an executive summary of the uh, construction that was based on JMT's feasibility report. And they basically came back and said that we need to do a lot more further investigation on that um, feasibility report, the recommendations in there. I think what they were uh, suggesting was it seemed to be more feasible to construct the bridge than it was the underpass. 
we needed to do more study. Um, even though the bridge would cost more, um, they thought it was more feasible to actually do it. We would have less of uh, long-term issues um, than the underpass. But we're going to have to uh, evaluate that a lot further. So no decision has been made which is the, the better approach at this point based on that, those comments we got back from hit construction. Um, the proposed, right now we're working with Public Works, uh, the on-call engineer program that we have basically just to, to determine um, what is the best way to provide the construction drawings. And um, the thinking there is we would probably design it at a 30% for completion and at that point we'll be able to figure out whether or not we could, we could bid this thing as a design build project or it would be what they're calling a job order contract where we would actually design it. So those are the, the latest comments on that. Now in the Texas Community Park. So Dorchester County Parks and Rec staff continue to perform routine site visits and maintenance checks to ensure operations are running smoothly. This included a meeting with the HVAC company to have the drip pan and other items examined. And I don't know if it was discussed at the last meeting, but there are new uh, backboards and nets put on the hoops up there. Um, but for other than that, it's just been uh, looking for ways to continue to make sure that park gets used. Mr. Chairman, one of the things that we talked about in our friends group was having the focus in some of these other areas outside of Ash River Park and Pine Trace and Davis Bailey, specifically stuff like Texas Community Park, when we do fundraisers like the Ashley River Run, is funneling some of those funds to stuff like this so that we could help in the Parks Department where we used to for the Brosnan event. Right. So okay. just giving you an update about that. Good, thank you. Okay, just a couple comments on the Oak Brook Sports Complex. Um, change orders were uh, approved earlier this summer um, to engage the consultant to do some additional survey work uh, working with the county staff and the Y. And um, Land Plan Group uh, South developed uh, and has been refining a conceptual plan that includes multi-use uh, ball fields, soccer fields, and other facilities for um, the YMCA programming. Uh, the county staff and the Y has been meeting with the consultant um, in person and through teams to provide uh, comment on some of the the renderings and we're waiting right now for a revised uh, concept. We also awarded um, to a surveyor uh, a subdivision plat because in this partnership there's going to have to be some exchange of land. Um, so that's, that work is ongoing right now. Um, Edisto Lakes Park. Um, just wanted to point out on this map right here, the county recently acquired approximately 125 acres. It was uh, earlier this year. And it's contiguous to the 405 acre tract that's owned by um, the Audubon. So we met with our, um, our preferred con uh, consultant, Stantec, county staff in Audubon. We went out early September, we walked the site talked about programming uh, concepts, and um, also asked the uh, consultant, Stantec, to submit a proposal for master planning uh, and preliminary engineering. So that was just submitted last week. Um, the administrator's office is in the process of review reviewing that right now, um, and then we're reporting back to uh, county council on that. Okay, and then we were asked to put on um, a topic for trail discussion. And I don't know if I have the latest and greatest information here on the Eagle Chandler Creek Trail. Um, but from what um, the Capital Projects Manager and our Public Works folks have been indicating, uh, there has been a bid package that was being worked on by Michael Baker um, international, it's an engineering consultant, and that bid package was designed um, basically to adhere to the Dorchester County uh, 
procurement requirements. There's no federal money being used for uh, this project. It's all going to be through TIF funds at this point. So there is no um, federal procurement requirements in there that adhere to the uh, what they call the, the DBE requirements. Um, notice to uh, notice to proceed was issued by uh, SCDOT, and the bid package right now is being reviewed by the purchasing uh, department. And then we just put some maps in here showing um, the red areas, the trail, proposed uh, trail connection. And it looks like that's Old Fort Road going up to Latson. And then just a couple comments on the Sol Salmo Branch Trail that our staff, county staff, is currently um, working with the Town of Somerville Parks and Recreation Department on this project. It's basically a partnership, and uh, we're hoping to be able to come back at a future meeting and have more information about a timetable uh, for this project. But at this point, I don't have any of the details um, about what what's all included in designs or what's being considered, if bike paths are being considered. We would have to go back and, I guess, you know, get that information from the, the committee that's working on that. Um, what Amy provided Austin with um, is a copy that you see up here. I think it's some PR information um, that they put together that talks about the, the trail. And they have the trail entrance. They designate that down in the right-hand corner. You see the star there. That indicates that that's the uh, East Richardson Avenue trail entrance. So, and then it's just my understanding that the, um, the Eagle Chandler Creek and the Sawmill Branch, when you talk about both of those globally, it's, it's known as the Loblolly Greenway. And I think the committee came up with that recommendation. Uh, I'd also like to point out that uh, on the slide, the uh, the two X's are basically the what you saw on the first side for Ingle Chandler Creek. Uh, that's the X that's on the right hand side where it ends off on Ladson, and then where the X is on the left hand side, that's estimated where the um, the sawmill branch is supposed to begin, according to that latest map by Amy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so that just shows you where they are in relation to each other, to where one currently ends and where another currently begins. Uh, but then as we were seeing earlier with some of the public comments, they might connect further down on the road as well too, so. Okay. Now on to uh, special events and programming. So as I spoke about earlier, we had the Dorchester County Employee Appreciation Lunch in the Ashley River Park. We had over 500 employees attend as Smoking Gringos alone uh, dished out 379 lunches and burgers and trays was not far from that. Uh, so again, when I said earlier, we set up tables and chairs under the pavilion. We had the food trucks, that little horseshoe pull off there. We had cornhole and the inflatable archery and it went for about three hours and the county loved it and we're hoping to build on this to make it an annual thing and hopefully we can hopefully do one or two a year, do one at Ashley River, one at Davis Bailey so we can kind of hit everything and go from there to help build up the morale and as Parks and Rec we enjoyed uh, jumping in and helping with the other uh, departments to do this. Um, Davis Bailey's Trunk or Treat, like we spoke about earlier, they had over 30 trunks show up. They had between five to 600 people. It was very well attended. All the kids seemed very happy and excited. It went very well, uh, even especially for Bert, with him throwing his back out two days before the event, and he still uh, managed to hobble his way around, but it, it went very well, and um, definitely something we can keep building on to make this a bigger uh, annual event. There were more than 600 people there. And that's, we, were, we were just trying to... Well, that was our rest. We were conservative. Yeah. 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 There were 600 people waiting to turn left. So that was at Davis Bailey. This is Davis Bailey. This is Davis, Davis Bailey. Bailey. Just, just wait until yeah. we get to the next one. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. Apologies. Okay, got ahead of the slide. <laughs> so then obviously now we're on to Ashley Rivers. So Davis Bailey's was Friday night. Ashley Rivers was Saturday afternoon. Uh, 
we chose that time frame because we knew being a first time and being in Somerville with the population, we knew we were going to get pounded. We wanted to do it in daylight just to make traffic and other logistical things that may pop up a little more feasible to do. That one was over 2,000 people. We partnered with Dorchester Paws for this one. So if you had an annual pass, you got in. If you did not, you either had to pay the $2 per person or bring an item that we got off a list of things that Dorchester Paws needed. We had well over 400 items donated that we got to bring to Dorchester Paws for cat food, dog food, litter. Um, and then we were able to drop it off and do a nice little photo and kind of get a quick little tour of the facility. And we're going to be setting up meetings, hopefully, to partner with them with future events. Yes, there was a lot of people at this one. But uh, for a first event, I think uh, it was a success. And we know where to build from here to make it more successful. And we can talk to Ride Hill or anyone else. We've got quite a few things in the works after emailing people on how we want to handle it next year to make it more feasible, less waiting in line, and to utilize the entire park and not just one small area. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spar yeah. Yes, <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man was in attendance. Yes, he was. I was at uh, both trunk retreats, so I would like to point out. Um, also, one quick note, something Austin and I discussed is um, you'll notice that one of the um, advertisements that we did for this event was uh, we purchased two billboard spaces for the um, for this event. And uh, we mainly did that because we had accommodations tax money that our department had set aside for Ashley River that we needed to use anyway. So uh, we purchased those billboard spaces to promote this event. And I think it worked a little too well in this case. So I'm um, definitely going to reconsider maybe just one billboard for like large events in the future. So and this just helps us get more fuel for the fire. So next year we can utilize the event lawn with its intended purpose. And hopefully from there we can just make this even more successful. Do you know how many vendors you had at the Ashley River Park? So we had 32. Um, we were hoping for 35, but a couple got stuck in traffic and just decided not to come. But we had 32 trunks. Then we had Coastal Coffee, we had the face, Peachy Palette Face Painters, and then we had um, Kona Isa Somerville. So next year we have some plans that we'll, once we finalize them, we'll present to you guys on how we're going to do this um, from a logistical standpoint, who's going to be there for vendors, what activities we're going to have, and how we can spread everything out and better utilize the park. Of the... Um, oh, sorry, uh, of the trunks that we had to, I believe roughly... A dozen, maybe around half of that 30, were in fact uh, trunks representing a local business. We would love more parking if, if you want to put that in your notes for later. I'll never say no to more parking. Okay. That, that's part of what we need to work on across the street. And I, I have an minutes. idea on how to gain 15 to 20 spots in the park near the pavilion, too, that I'm happy to pitch anytime. Okay. So, perfect. Uh, Is that how many vendors run out of? Uh, a few of them ran out of candy. We bought about 30 pounds of candy, so we had some for us, and then we had a, a stash that we kept for vendors. So now we know for next year we're probably going to have to probably triple that number, and that's being conservative. So, And then here's our next slide. was just our us partnering with Dorchester Paws. Within two hours of us dropping off the donations, they had already distributed to whoever needed it, whether it was fosters or in the kennels themselves to the animals so it was good to see that we were able to come together as a community and help someone out like that great um, so now on to the veterans day event at davis bailey so that was this past saturday uh the the parade went well the ceremony went well uh they they had a band performing while we had different inflatables so as you can see there the obstacle course inflatable was by far the most popular one the bounce house was uh, heavily attended by kids under the age of four. And then they had a <clears throat> bull riding inflatable that was definitely pretty popular towards the end. And then they had four food trucks, technically, or food truck vendors? There were three. Uh, yeah, there were three there in total. But one of them was a, um, one was more of a beverage yeah. truck, too, so... So then we had that. Um, I know personally my daughter enjoyed it and made us stay from start to finish all the way through to the fireworks. The fireworks show was great. Um, the playground was, was packed pretty much all day long with kids, including right through the fireworks show. Um, and I would say that 100 attendees was 
definitely uh, on the lower side. I think it was more, it was just hard to gauge it because of all the rain they had leading up to it. It really spread things out. Um, the, the tent even had to get moved, the 40 by 40 tent from where we originally had it. Um, so this is definitely an event that we can continue to build on and make it even better. Yeah, you get a thumbs up for the friendly the parade. It's not real well. Yeah, good feedback. Hmm? Good feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. so, and we've definitely uh, thought of a few things to add, things to tweak, and then um, ways to get the word out more. So hopefully even more attend next year. Good. So uh, some upcoming stuff. Um, so Davis Bailey is planning on doing a movie in the park on December 9th. Bert has narrowed it down to two movies. When he comes back from the state recreation conference, he is going to finalize that. And he's working on lining up some other stuff. Ashley River Park, we're gonna do ours on the 17th. Right now we are planning on doing the 2018 animated version of The Grinch. We will be lining up uh, some food trucks to bring in as well and Hopefully books and beyond will have them come for like an afternoon thing leading into that to kind of draw some more people in. And we're looking at adding a few other smaller things to make it a Christmas thing. And then today, uh, Dina and other staff worked on lining up some orders so we can get some decorations so we can decorate the office and the entryway into the office. And then hopefully for the movie night, we'll have some decorations and whatnot over by the pavilion and the playground areas to kind of make it a, a fun day in the park. And then as you can see here, we're doing a toy drive. Um, Ashley River already has one of those boxes completely full of toys, and the other one is about a quarter full at this point. Um, so as we keep going into this, uh, Rigel has been very good at putting on posts, keeping the public informed, making sure that we can draw attention to this because it's obviously a great cause. So that's why we're happy to house it at Ashley River. Once we get the fall decorations out of the way once we get through Thanksgiving and we put the Christmas decorations out there. Uh, we might have that actual decoration you see in that slide set up outside the office along with some other ones. And like it says here, um, they plan on distributing all the donation items on the 23rd of December. And then we had a press conference a couple weeks ago just to announce this just so people would know. So. And then some operational updates. So um, the Parks and Rec staff, along with multiple other departments, we participated on October 12th on a nighttime water rescue exercise with emergency management, first responders, and a few other departments. And we had a few meetings leading up to it, and we did the event for training, and it went very well. It was definitely a first time for a lot of us, and it it was well attended. Our, I know our staff got a lot out of it, whether it was our office aides or the park rangers. Um, County Council has approved to reclassify the marketing special events manager. The candidate has been selected and they are currently in the process with human resources. So hopefully in the next week or so we can move forward with that so we can start to plan bigger events that we have on our list of things we wanna do over the next year at all the parks. Austin attended a meeting with the ASRAC on October 12th and provided updates on Ash River Park and future department projects. We got new radios at the park that um, personally I am a fan of because they are smaller and lighter and I didn't have to create an extra uh, hole in my belt to keep my pants on with the old ones. They are working and we have a, a staff member from EMD that will be coming in in December to do a radio etiquette training for all staff when we do our annual staff training that we're gonna do later in December. Um, new RFI for the Adventure Ropes course and climbing walls being established by county staff for Ashley River Park. Uh, Austin is currently working with Jessica Kerr at of Business Services to get that going so we can get that out and try to move forward with that. And then Austin, Burt, and Laquan are all currently at the South Carolina State Parks and Recreation Conference in Hilton Head. Uh, they were there yesterday, they're there today. They'll be there tomorrow and they come back tomorrow. Um, from what I've heard from Bert and Laquan, they have had a blast. They have learned quite a bit and they are excited and hopefully this will be something that can uh, rejuvenate them, give them some ideas to bring back to us so we can continue to grow with our offerings and how we run things. Questions? I'll go slower next time. I'm just 
it's the it's the coach in me. I try to be loud, precise, and keep it moving. I just think two years ago we really didn't have much to talk about. You know, I mean, it's. What, but yes, we will. I mean, think about all the events that we've had already, and we've barely been open on one part for a year and another one for not even that. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, personally, I just I'd like for us to really dial in some some of that discussion with Solomon Branch. I'd like to get with y'all on that, and just we'll talk more about that because I, I want to see where we need to get on that. Um, but I've also talked to Ms. Ward about some of that as well. Anybody got anything they want to? Something, yeah. So that, that should be here before the end of the calendar year. I can also confirm that we did put in a purchase order and the funds are already allocated and set aside for the construction of that. So we've, we've got it in our budget. So we, okay. we're working on it. I've had that too. Thank you very much. Brown, you got anything? Yes, um, I like to say that the fight for the parks is well worth it because the people really enjoying the parks and, and they're really turning out. And you're hearing a lot of good things about the parks. I appreciate so that. We, they're reaping the benefits from it now. Thank you. Well, thank you all for staying the course. Came to a lot of meetings for a lot of years where we just talked about stuff. Yep. Took a while, but took a while to fight. Thank you. Y'all got anything? Oh, okay. Do we that one on the agenda? Oh, you know, I guess. Yeah, operational updates. You've already hit that. Announcements. All right, so I just need a motion for the approval of meeting calendar. I'll make that motion. All right, got a motion for approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, we are unanimous for approving the meeting calendar. And any other announcements about anything? I think I should consider having a meeting in December. I think that was discussed with a couple. What month is it now? Is it October? November. It's November? Yeah. For real? December 20th. Right. December 20th. Um, December 20th. Oh, yeah, that's, get, that's getting a little close to Christmas. Yeah, I think we've... Why don't we... No, that's We're talking about this year. I don't know that we're going to have anything... We don't have much to talk about in December? Between now and then? We're, uh, we've tabled quite a few of our events, bigger events for after... So I know from at least from our standpoint, from the staff, it's just going to be the general day-to-day -day stuff with a couple smaller events to get us through. So who's going to do it? Or I'm, 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 I'm going to support. We're basically tabling our larger events for the events marketing manager to get here and get their feet under them, and then we're going to really hit the ground running, if that helps. Mr. Chairman. We're gonna, we're gonna yes, Mr. Dabney. I would make a motion that we forego the December meeting. I second that. I have a motion to forego the December meeting. Let's let's discuss that for about 45 minutes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we will forego December meeting, meet again in January. So, Ms. Rita May, this will be your last Parks and Rec Commission meeting. Thank you for your diligence and your so, okay, dedication. So I think so. We'll just disappear you from the list. Right. We'll figure it out. I think that's a great idea. Well, she was, that's all being delivered for the December meeting. Staff actually has a token that we would like to award to Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Very nice. Thank you. I'm the last original one. Are you? Um, I get a little emotional here, Rita, mate. Last original what? I don't know. No, you're not. Monta has been on here since the beginning. 
Au contraire. I mean, he, he was on here before we had a committee. Before it was a commission. That's, yeah, he was the commission way back when. That's okay. I've written all the notes. You're the, you're the legacy. You're the legacy note taker. When your time comes, you'll get a bigger coffee mug. John's in there walking. We'll get you a Yeti. I like that. Is it going to be name brand? Okay. Name brand Yeti? All right. I like that. Let's see. I'm going to go eat more. All right, I need a motion to a motion we adjourn. make your reading of May. Circle and a second. All in favor? Act. That's right. That's right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You can point somebody in your position. Make sure you point a secretary. No, Rigel is going to take the notes. Well, you take the notes? Uh, Mr. Brown, okay. I thought you were going to take the notes. No, not you didn't think that. <laughs> And congratulations again. Here's, uh, you make a good. You make a good. Mike, how's it going? Have a great Thanksgiving. Hey, same to you. For what? All right, guys. Make sure you get served. I suggest you go to dinner sometime. John Mott,